So uh, our training speaker for today is uh, Neil Shadid. She's a grad student in the Brenda Andrews and Quaid Morris lab, and she'll be talking about machine learning and computer vision approaches for phenotypic profiling. Thank you very much, Alvi. Thank you all for coming. Today I'd like to talk to you about my project about developing an image analysis pipeline for analyzing these images. a lot of micrographs that I want to show. Okay, so in our lab we're interested in understanding this complex relationship between an organism's genotype and its phenotype. And we want to understand this in order to extract more information about how genes work in general. The phenotypes that we're interested in are uh, cellular phenotypes. And uh, we want to extract information from compartments specifically because there are so many functions that cannot be captured by only looking at fitness or colony size in uh, In previous uh, studies, we've, uh, people have shown that there are so many functions that we don't know about specific genes that we have to look at how they change the subcellular morphology of the cell so that we can understand this. We want to be able to explain most of the functions of uh, unknown genes by looking at these uh, images in a systematic way. In order to do that, we have uh, developed a pipeline that uh, we're introducing uh, fluorescent proteins into specific compartments of interest, and we're crossing all of these compartments uh, separately in uh, genome-wide deletion strains. So we have around 6,000 genes in yeast that we've simply deleted, and we're looking at 18 different compartments. And this gives us millions of cells to analyze, and we have to come up with an automatic way of detecting these mutant morphologies. Expanding on this project, we also have other projects in the lab that's focusing on, again, looking at mutant morphologies in different backgrounds, such as chemical perturbations or time course studies and uh, and so forth. So this generalized pipeline will be of great use for uh, many people in the lab and we want to also open it to the community. So I'd just like to walk you over uh, this prof uh, phenotypic profiling pipeline pretty quickly. So first we have the perturbation and it can be either genetic or chemical. And then we're doing imaging with uh, confocal fluorescent microscopy in our lab. And in order to acquire the data, we can look at uh, the traditional way of extracting features from single cells, or we can look at single cell images directly. After acquiring this data, we would like to ask specific questions depending on the experimental biologist's needs, such as, are we only interested in understanding uh, the genes that affect the mutant morphology in general? So we want to detect the mutants, uh, all of the mutants together. If you know what kind of mutant phenotypes, distinct mutant phenotypes you want to see, we can just classify them. Or if you don't know any of the mutant phenotypes, well, we want to find sub-clusters in these, we can apply clustering algorithms too. So here I will talk about a couple of these uh, different nodes, if we follow this tree. And I'd like to just give some, uh, some of my findings with them. First of all, I want to talk about how we're extracting these uh, traditional features. For that, we're looking at the GFP channel for the compartment of interest, and we have two uh, RFP channels that tag the nucleus and cytoplasm for further image analysis purposes. When we cross this over uh, the whole uh, single deletion collection, then we also image them using a fluorescent microscopy and separate for the RFP and GFP channels. After that, we're using an open software uh, called cell profiler in order to detect single cells and we're looking at the RFP channel to locate which pixels are uh, consisting a single cell. So after segmenting each cell we can then uh, extract features for each cell specifically and these features describe the morphology of the cell such as cell size and shape, intensity, texture and granularity. For each cell we extract around 300 features and then with applying uh, PCA, we can then uh, reduce our dimension to explain 80% of the variance in the data. After this step, after uh, extracting all of the PCs that are relevant for morphologies, we want to detect the mutants. So for that, we are uh, trying to modify an unsupervised algorithm by looking only at one class, because we only know what wild type looks like, and we, for each cell, we want to ask the binary, quest, binary classification question whether something has a wild type morphology or mutant morphology. And 
it, this is important to do it in single cell level because we want to uh, because uh, we can't really say for sure if each cell in an isogenic population will show the same morphology. So we want to quantify this penetrance information from each mutation. And then after that, we can grab a, a phenotypic profile for each gene over the compartments that we have imaged to understand which genes are affecting which compartments. For that, I'm using uh, classical outlier detection algorithms on that, and here each dot represents a cell in the PC space, and here we can find that the uh, white ones are wild type looking cells and the other ones are mutants. And for each gene deletion background, we can then quantify the percentage of mutant cells to come up with the penetrance value. And we can capture most of the positive and negative controls uh, really good with most with the first two methods here, but the uh, GMMs don't really give uh, a high accuracy. So next, once we have identified all of the mutants, we can also ask the question, can we also classify these into specific mutant phenotypes? For this, we require a lot of labeled cells, and uh, the experimental biologists can have uh, a couple of gene deletion backgrounds that give us specific mutant phenotypes. And what I really would like you to appreciate is how similar these phenotypes are looking to each other. When, we're, when we plot the uh, cell profiler features for each of these classes on a T-SME space, we can, see the, uh, this, uh, we can see different clusters that are occurring here. So we know that through nonlinear methods we can do this multi-class classification. For that, I'm using a simple neural network. It's fully connected with two hidden layers, and I'm inputting the cell profiler features. And for each cell, we're then asking what's the maximum probability, which class gives us the maximum probability to do the prediction. And for that, for this uh, example compartment, we can achieve really high accuracies through this method. We have applied this to all of the compartments that we have through cell profiler features again, and we achieve around 80% uh, mean tested accuracy. But there are still some compartments that we can't, uh, we can't predict uh, accurately, so we need better uh, algorithms for that. In order to do that, I then wanted to focus on extracting single cell images and applying uh, deep learning on these images. So how are we extracting the single cell images? So we've implemented a mixture model, and we're looking at the whole, uh, whole uh, cell images. And from there, we're applying a non-symmetric mixture model to basically identify three pixel classes, the nucleus, cytoplasm, and background. And from there, we can find individual objects. And with a watershed algorithm, we can find the boundaries that either merge two dividing cells together, or are they separate objects. And after that, we can then uh, plot the outlines for each cell. And then we can put a bounding box that's, uh, that for yeast, it's optimum around 64 by 64 pixels, to gather this into a single cell image data set. So we've just finished. Uh, optimizing this pipeline. And after that, we then will ask what, uh, if we can detect mutants and if we can classify different mutant phenotypes. In order to detect mutants, we have took an approach that is, again, modifying this uh, unsupervised learning into binary classification. For that, we're using an autoencoder, and it has three convolutional layers because we're working with images uh, that have three by three filters that we can that we're inputting the image and then we would like to reconstruct the same image with high accuracy and low reconstruction error. So we're training the autoencoder on one class only because we know only information from the normal cell or wild type cells for this case. And we've tested on this in a slightly different yeast image data set. So instead of looking at the mutant phenotypes because we didn't have the data before, we looked at a protein localization data set and if we train this autoencoder on just looking at the nucleus, we wanted to ask how well can we classify these other classes that are not nucleus by looking at reconstruction error as a, as a score for classification. And we can achieve really high accuracies with these, but notice that this is a slightly different problem than what I'm trying to achieve, and I don't have um, performance yet for the mutant detection that I want to do. As well, for my future direction, I want to apply the single cell images to classify mutant phenotypes. And for that, the approach that I will take is from this uh, paper that, we have, uh, that my lab published a year ago. 
and I will be working on a convolutional neural network that is trained on, again, these cell images. And the, uh, the good part of using, and this, this technique is called transfer learning, and the good part of using transfer learning is that we requ this requires much less uh, number of labeled cells and to achieve high accuracies, because it, we really need a lot of cells to train uh, a convolutional neural network from scratch. And because this network can identify how the yeast cells look like, we are expecting to see high accuracies with that. And at the end of all of these uh, phenotypic profiling, we will then extract information for each cell and phenotype. And this method can also be applied to any kind of uh, cellular image data set for other organisms as well. With that, I'd like to thank my uh, supervisors, Brenda and Quaid, and my committee members for this great project and all of the members of the Phenomics team and my lab members, and thank you for listening. <laughs>